Hi, I'm Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com. We're here at the Palace Hotel in New York City. We're about to go upstairs and interview Ron Wood from the Rolling Stones. He's uh, got a new solo album called I Feel Like Playing, and we've got some of your questions to ask him and some of ours, so I, I hope you enjoy the video. How did this uh, all come about? Oh, it's great. Uh, a natural uh, chain of events, really. Uh, I left home, like you do. Uh -huh. <laughs> complete surprise to me and I had songs like what do you want to go and do a thing like that for <laughs> on my mind and uh, well I don't think so and, and lots of phrases going through my mind and um, I started the whole thing off with uh, Steve Bing he said to me um, hey Ronnie I want to hear you play people want to hear you play I hope you don't mind but I've booked the house of blues tonight for you I've got Jim Keltner up there and um, Ivan Neville, and I said, wow, I've got Flea at the ready, he's in town, and I'm here with Bernard Fowler, so I said, come on, let's all go up to the studio then, make a start. So um, we started with Spoonful, a number that was, you know, uh, goes down through the years, and that I was inspired by Howlin' Wolf, you know, Willie Dixon wrote it, blah, blah, and it was a, a nice suggestion from Bernard, he said, yeah, why don't we start with that one, man, you could really do that. So we did that in a couple of takes and just live and um, and it was a good feel about it and then I said well I've got these ideas for to put around these words like what do you want to go and do a thing like that for <laughs> to be said in a southern accent. <laughs> I think that would make a great country and western song actually it should be played on the country stations. Chris Christopherson writing the words to the verses he was at the House of Blues. I just happened to bump him, into him and Don was on the steps going in. And uh, Chris showed an interest, you know, and I, I said, I've got this chorus. I need some words for the verses. Mm -hmm. And he said, I said, come on, Chris, write something for me, would you? And he said, OK, Ronnie, but I can't do it today. Give me till tomorrow, and I'll come <laughs> back with a couple of verses for you. And he did, and I loved it, you know. I hear that old coyote howling at the moon, you know, and things like that. Liberty wow. is all I ever wanted. Holy fire is what I need. Yeah, really typical, Chris, but and, uh, really helpful. And uh, Eddie Vedder was the same way with um, helping me on um, Lucky Man and Catch You and stuff. But it was great to get Bobby Womack out of the woodwork as well mm -hmm. to come and help me on some backgrounds. And, and he was pleased with my singing. So was Rod Stewart. He came in at the time and he said, oh, you're singing really well. He said, I give you the, the stamp of approval now. You <laughs> are a vocalist. And that's coming, you know, coming from Rod, that was great. And Womack and Bernard. But uh, had great people in the studios nearby, like Slash and Billy Gibbons coming through. And he said, I've got a song for you, man. You know, I've got a thing about you. And Slash is always easy to work with. He says, what do you want me to play? I say, you know, just go out there and play. And uh, we play together, and he knows what I want. You mentioned Slash, Billy Gibbons, uh, Flea, Bob Rock played on it too. And one of the interesting things about when I listen to it is, you know, a lot of albums with star-studded players on them, you can really pick out it. It's almost like the, play the famous player that's a guest you, you can really pick out what they're playing and it feels like it's coming from one of their own projects but on this album it really blends in you can if you can't pick out the uh, yeah I, the I sometimes don't know which is me playing and which is uh, Billy Gims or which yeah, is yeah. Slash or, but the great thing is there. we have the understanding yeah. of it's a front room very casual kind of you know feel it's not like okay you're featured here no yeah. none of that it's just a very natural it's like everyone surrendered their egos or whatever, yeah, and just contributed to this project. And I I've love always that. done you my can't... solo albums like yeah. that. They've always been a very mutual understanding, and everyone's just kind of yeah, like you say, they drop whatever egos they have. Normally, I don't work with people with egos. And anymore. I don't mean that in there. <laughs> it's, almost, but you, it's just so cool. You listen to it, and you're not like, oh, that's Billy Gibbons right there, because it's got some, you yeah. know, that Texas boogie or anything. On that song, uh, I've got a thing about you. I don't know which part he's playing. Yeah. The only bit that gives him away is when he goes, Ooh, you know, <laughs> you know that's him, yeah. his little signature. Did you approach writing and recording for this album differently than you would, say, for a Stones record? Yeah. Well, in a Stones album, for a start, you have to get it 
passed by the board, you know, mm -hmm. the Jagger Richards, they don't yeah. accept a suggestion very easily, you know, because <laughs> they've already got it sewn up. So you've got to have a pretty good song to get it, get it by the, the board, um, which I respect, you know. And we all, in Stone's downtime, we all um, pursue our own thing, you know, whether yeah. Mick does a film or Keith's doing his pirate and making an album. Charlie's got his jazz band on the, right. his jazz outfits, whether it's a, a quintet or a quartet or whatever, an orchestra, he has to keep his um, chops together. He loves to play. Mm -hmm. That's what I love to do. I just love to keep playing, you know, and keeping my um, fingers hard at the end. Otherwise, yeah. you give it a few months, they start to go soft yeah. and you, <laughs> it's no good. You've got to keep working. And keep, I keep painting and keep playing. Mm. Yeah. I always give my best and I was um, very natural with it. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of easier, it's laid on a plate by the Stones more because Mick or Keith will have this riff and, and uh, I interpret immediately. I go, oh, I know what you need. And they know that. And with my albums, I often know what the basis is and I know where I want to take it. And that's why I can have guests on it, mm -hmm. because if they don't play it, I'll play it anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of party time, you know, like, okay, let's party, let's have some fun making a record. That's what I love yeah. to do. Approaching getting the actual tones, guitar tones, do you? Oh, Edge said to me, how do you get that tone? I said, just turn it up to 10 and <laughs> full volume. <laughs> I don't use effects, you know, very rarely. Um, and he's Mr. Effects, you know. He, you he can't understand how I do it. Did you use the same guitars and amps that you would normally use with the Stones in the studio? Or? Yeah, yeah. My, my man Dave Rouse, my guitar roadie, he, um, he says, do you want the Champ or any? Do you want the Deluxe or the Twin or the Fender, you know? Or uh, I, I usually go with the Strat and, you know, Whammy Bar or um, a Slide or a B-Bender. I didn't use a B-Bender on this album, which uh, I would have liked to have done, but I did use a pedal steel, so that's even better. Oh, cool. Do you remember which particular guitars and amps you use the most? Not really, but I suppose uh, my old standby is my 55 Strat and a Champ amp. Mm -hmm. Have guitar and amp will travel, you know. <laughs> is that like an old uh, 60s blackface or something? Or? What, the amp? The Champ, yeah. Well, it's uh, the Blonde Tweed. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think. Um, like wine, you know, the matured sound of, of a 50s Strat is more or less a stable part of my diet. Like Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page and all that, they just, and Eric, they're just very comfortable if you get the reliable sound that comes from a 50s amp and a 50s guitar, whether it's an acoustic or an electric. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to a Martin or something for an acoustic and um, or an old um, J200. I'm always open to ideas. I mean, I'll use a, a Gibson. I use um, a Les Paul once in a while. I mean, but that's another thing. If you've got Slash around, you know you're going to have a Les Paul sound. <laughs> right. So I've got the Fender side covered. Um, but uh, amps wise, uh, uh, a Boogie or an old Box AC30. Oh, you use both of those? They're all them? there, you know. If I if I want to, and sometimes I don't know which amp I'm, I'm using. If the sound satisfies me, then that's fine. That was a boogie, like an old Mark II C or something, or uh, just the old, the the regular Mesa boogie with the EQ mm -hmm. on the front. I don't know the model Older number. One, the little combo. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, they're cool. Like I used an old Fenton wheel on the solo for Maggie May. It was like a, more or less a converted radio. You wow. know, it's a bit like the Champ amp uh -huh. is. You know, it's just a bit of distortion ready built in. Just because of the old valves and stuff, you know. Do you ever try out new boutique stuff? Yeah. You know, there's so many companies trying to recapture the old hardwired. They do a damn good and... job, you know. Uh, sometimes I can't tell the difference between a, a valve amp and a modern job, you know. But uh, just put it to the test. I mean, if it can survive a tour, a heavy beating on a tour, uh, then it's a sign of a good amp. Just off the top of your head, um, capture the highlights with some of the big name guitarists that were on there. Like, we start off with Billy Gibbons. What were some of the most memorable points of the sessions with him? Um, 
Well, Billy Gibbons is very bossy for a start. <laughs> he, he went like, we got this riff, right? Do, do, do. And I'm going, do, do, do. All right, none of that. No, just play the lick, you know, just play that. And I go, okay, Billy. <laughs> so we play that together. And, um, and then when it comes time to let rip, he goes, you take it your way, you know, and I'll take it mine and we'll meet you in the middle. But uh, he was just great fun. And he's a very uh, enthusiastic, creative person. And I love to bounce off that, that and he, creativity. And he played on two songs, right? Yeah, but while he was there, when we'd finished um, I Got a Thing About You, I said, oh, I'm working on this other song called I Gotta Go, I Gotta See. I said, how about I play it to you? And he went, oh, when he heard it, he went, oh, do, 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 do. It needs that kind of approach, you know, and I said, yeah, perfect, go for it. So he just did that in one take, you know. So there you have a snippet of our interview with Ron Wood from the Rolling Stones talking about his new solo album, I Feel Like Playing. For the full interview, be sure to pick up the November issue of Premier Guitar. I'm Sean Hammond, and you're watching PremierGuitar.com.